Nine and Hannah Roberts coxed by Kayla Young and coached by Nick Bartlett. Well, they have done well to pull back some time, certainly not pulling back 13 seconds, but this has been a fantastic finish from Gippsland Grammar. They really are eating into the advantage, but that's probably because Queen would have also just eased off slightly. This is going to be a lot tighter than what we saw at the 1500 timing check, but Queen would, in the end, it's a cruise that last 500 metres for them. They are going through quite simply to the schoolgirls Cox quad. Through to the semi-final, Gippsland Grammar, they put in a good effort in that last 500 metres. In the end, they close that margin to seven seconds, so they pull back about five seconds there. They are through to the rapid charge, but they'll be in a good position, a good lane for that. And then in third place, it is Radford College coming through in fourth. We are going to see Furbank Grammar come through. So all of these crews heading through to the Repper Charge. And they're going to be joined there. Trinity Lutheran also heading there. Gippsland Grammar. This is the other crew, the Gippsland Grammar in lane four. It's going to be a tight finish here with Perth College on the far side. Gippsland Grammar just get it. 0.79, the unofficial difference between those two. And that rounds out the field for this uh, second heat. Confirming the results of the second heat of the schoolgirls Coxed Quad Skull, a win for Queenwood School. Second, uh, they progress through to the semi-final. Second, Gippsland Grammar, stroked by Hannah Roberts. Third, Radford College. Fourth, Furbank Grammar. Fifth, Trinity Lutheran. Sixth, Gippsland Grammar, stroked by Tilly Fox. Seventh, Perth College. Those crews progress to the repechage. Winning time, 8.14.19. Ooh, hardly any difference at all. Uh, margin, 7.22. What was that last one? 8.14.07, 8.14.19. Yeah, so close, get closer if you tried. A bit closer in the racing, though. Uh, heat three of the schoolgirls' coxed quad skull is now in progress with Perth College again in the far lane. That's the lane closest to the camera, lane two. Queenwood School in lane three, Kinross Wallaroy in lane four, MLCQ in lane five, Canberra Girls Grammar in lane six, and Strathcona. And I've been reliably informed by Turbo Charge down there in the, in the film studio, Strathcona Baptist Girls Grammar School. Now, there we go. Perth College, that's the crew of Elise Moreau Barrett, Sin Sydney Hillier, Lily Holthouse, and Laura Stokes. Grace Scally is coxing them, and they're coached by Felix Van Gass and Michael Beer. Queenwood School, this is the crew of Annie Sev, Brooke Cuttance, Zoe James, and Phoebe Campbell, coxed by Naomi Peace, coached by Ella Davidson, Ashley Fitch, and Ocean Nolan. And I do believe that that is the second half of the first date. In lane four from Kinross Wallaroy, Ruby Lego, Millie Lane, Ayla Ryan and Lucy Searle, coxed by Jade Caro and coached by Andrew Gannon and Trin Graham. Uh, Lucy Searle, who we saw win in the under-19 women single earlier on uh, for Sydney Rowing Club. In lane five, MLCQ, Olivia Peck, Hannah Fovey, Isabel Laurie and Paige Rodbard Bean, coxed by Eliza Wong. In lane six from Canberra Girls Grammar, Claudia Bridgewater, Abby Davis, Alex Perry Dalton and Eliza Lilly, coxed by Olivia Noonan and coached by Caroline Pipers. And in lane seven from Strathcona Baptist Girls Grammar School, Belle Gemmel, Nicole Tesh Ornelas, Matilda Stoltz and Ellie Turnham, coxed by Leah Kerno. So, again in this heat, we're seeing first Canberra Girls Grammar a long way ahead, 16, almost 17 seconds ahead of Queenwood. Kinross Wallaroy further back, 10 seconds the gap, then Perth College to Strathcona. So, first place crews in these heats doing it pretty comfortably at the moment, which is going to make for some really intriguing semi finals and finals later on in the week because. All of these crews have been around the 8.14 mark. And that's gonna be what will be intriguing to watch out for in this last 300 meters. How close can they get to that 8.14 mark? Because they've been outstanding so far. Canberra Girls Grammar in lane six, 7.32 it is at the moment, with about 150 meters to travel, so you would sense they're going to be well under that time. 
So they're going to really lay down a marker here. Heat three of the school goals, Cox, Quad, Skull. They're putting in some good energy here right until the back end. Remembering that those earlier races, the leaders did pull up close to the line. This Canberra Girls Grammar Crew, they are going right through to the finish. So you can probably understand that this time may be a little bit quicker from the ones that we have seen so far. And that is a pretty good time as they come through. It's going to be just under those previous heats. 8 11, 77 unofficially. Queenwood in second place. Back in third, Kinross Wallaroy. Perth College neck and neck with MLCQ. As they come through this final part of the race. Just confirming that Canberra Girls Grammar in first, Queenwood in second place. The gap ended up being 24 seconds. That is quite substantial. They're really moving it at the back end. Third place goes to Kinross Wallaroy. Perth College coming through in fourth place. And then you can also see on the end here, that is the crew from Strathcona in Victoria and then MLCQ in the middle of the course. They're gonna round out this heat number three of the school girls, Coxed Quad. Confirming the results of the third heat of the school girl, Coxed Quad Skull. First, Canberra Girls Grammar. They progress through to the semi-final. Second, Queenwood. Third, Kinross Wallaroy. Fourth, fourth, Perth College. Fifth, Strathcona. Sixth, MLC, MLCQ. These crews progress to the repechage. In our fourth heat of the schoolgirl Cox Quad Skull, we have Albert Park College in lane two, Seymour College in lane three, Melbourne Girls College in lane four, Wrighton Girls School in lane five, Strathcona in lane six, and another Wrighton Girls crew in lane seven. Albert Park College is Olivia Lewis, Ella Kilpikoski, Eva Lavashova, and Saska Payne with Lulu Gleason Payne Coxing, coached by Virginia Lee. In lane three, Seymour College from South Australia, Alice Rayner, Jade Rivett, Annie McNally, and Lucy Pocock, coxed by Luce, Lexi Dennis and coached by Matthew Nielsen. In lane four from Melbourne Girls College, Zoe Kerr, Imogen Otter, Mia Harrison, and Gemma Watson. Their cox is Grace Illingworth and their coach is Jessica Hare. In lane five, Wrighton Girls School crew of Chloe Dillon, Lucy Gillen, Matilda Pilkington, and Grace Hereford, coxed by Pippa Reed, coached by Matt Wilson and and Emily Montague. Strathcona are in lane six. Charlotte Harris, Leah Lenton, Sophie McIntosh and Lily Douglas, Cox by Miller Percannon and coached by Patrick Daly. And lane seven, we have a second right and girls school crew of Constantina Kafarsis, Sarah Haben, Charlotte Crozier and Asha Gowans. Sandu Palmer Guna Sekera is the Cox and coach is Matt Wilson. So Albert Park College, we had um, uh, Saskia Payne and uh, I'm pretty sure it was Eva Levash Levashova in the double skull. They've had a great season. They've had a great season in the quad as well. And it's exciting to see them at their second national championships under the leadership of their coach, Virginia Lee, who was pre presenting medals to all the lightweight women earlier on today. Virginia's are um, one of only two medalists at Olympic level in lightweight rowing here in Australia. The yep. other being Rebecca Joyce. Very exclusive company. Very. Mm. Almost put another very extremely, <laughs> extremely, yeah, outstanding. And going down in history because we know lightweight rowing at the Olympics. That's right. So if we, yeah, we need to qualify this year or last chance next year. And that might be the end of lightweight women's doubles. Virginia also has the distinction of uh, being a world champion in lightweight women's sweep rowing, having one in the four as well along with her co-coach, Minnie Cade. So, Wright and Girls, in the top two spots they were, but I think they may have just been overhauled. Melbourne Girls College coming through and maybe taking second. Not that that is going to matter in terms of going through to the semi, but it may uh, influence which lane they're in for those rep charges, which is all important. So, Wright and Girls, here they come. This is the crew in lane number seven. Kafasas, Haben, Crozier and Gowans. Cox by Gunasekera. 
And they are coming through in first place. And they beat the other right and crew. They really have put it in as well. It is really tough conditions out there. Melbourne Girls College come over the top of right and girls in that last 300 metres or so. So they claim second, right and girls in third. Albert Park College in fourth on the far side. That's good. Strathcona in fifth. And we're also going to see Seymour College round out this field. They are in sixth position currently. And they finish in a time of 8.12.40 with an 11 second lead, so not bad. So confirming the results of the fourth heat of the schoolgirl Cox Quad Skull, it will be Wright and Girl School, the crew that is stroked by Asher Gowans that will progress through to the semi-final. And going to the repercharge will be Melbourne Girls College, the Wright and Girl School crew that is stroked by Grace Hereford. Uh, in fourth place, Albert Park College. In fifth, Strathcona. And in sixth, Seymour College from South Australia. Through to the repechage they go. And that Wright and Girls School crew did 8.12.4 and the margin was 11.23. We're moving now to the heats of the schoolboy coxed quad skull. And again, the first crew to cross the line will go to the semi-final and the remainder will have to contest again in a repechage. In our first heat, we have Trinity Grammar Victoria in lane two, Pembroke School from South Australia in lane three, the Northern Beaches Secondary College of New South Wales in lane four. In lane five, Newington College from Sydney. In lane six, Kinross Wallaroy from Orange, New South Wales, and in lane seven a second Kinross Wallaroy crew from uh, New South Wales um, Northern Beaches College are in the lead and that is the crew of Zane McGregor Sam Merry Oscar Shield Gamborg and Dion Hansen coxed by Hamish Reed sitting in second position is the first of our Kinross Wallaroy crews and that's the crew with George Wakeham in the bow seat Magnus Cleary in two Ethan Shaw in three and Fletcher Smith in stroke with Angus Peterson coxing them they're in lane seven and sitting in third place, the second Kinross Wallaroy crew, which is in lane six of Henry Malloy, Zachary Annett, Campbell Miller and Willow Carter coxed by Henry Baker. Now you might think it doesn't matter if they're not going to go through to the semi-final straight away, that it doesn't matter um, contesting really ferociously their finished position, but it really does. If, any, if this regatta has taught us anything, it's how important it is to play the game, do your best, finish as high up the field as you can because the lanes are seeded in the event of bad wind and you want a better lane. It is tough though to convince yourself when you're out there <laughs> <It's a> tough <laughs> conditions when you know you're going through to still push for a lane. That is, that it is mentally slightly challenging. I will give it that. But these guys you did it? Well <laughs> you did it then. <laughs> well one thing I will say is this is not for a lane. This is for a spot straight through to the semi-final, this yes. first place, because this is really tight. Northern Beaches secondary and Kinross Wallaroy. Remembering Kinro Kinross Wallaroy were behind by a second at the 1K half a second at the 1500 they are closing the gap here on northern beaches secondary here we go we're going to get an absolutely fantastic finish in heat one of the schoolboys cox quad we've been waiting for a fantastic finish for a while we're getting one here northern beaches secondary kinross wallaroy with 50 meters to travel you just cannot split them looking across the line here the push is coming from both crews northern beaches secondary maybe just in front with just meters to go, Northern Beaches secondary just get there. But Kinross Wallaroy, they were closing the gap all the way down the course. They couldn't quite overhaul the crew from the Northern Beaches. And it is Northern Beaches secondary through to the semi final. Kinross Wallaroy, that's the crew in lane seven in second. Kinross Wallaroy's crew in lane six in third, Newington in fourth, Pembroke, Pembroke School from South Australia in fifth place, Trinity Grammar in six. There we go, Lizzie. We've been waiting Very a while exciting. for a finish like that. We have, and th those guys also row for Mossman, so again, they've been appearing in quite a few events at this regatta. Congratulations, Northern Beaches Secondary School, who take out the first heat of the schoolboys' coxed quad skull and progress directly through to the semi-final. I know they'll be pretty glad of a rest, because yesterday they did the double and the uh, coxless quad. Uh, in second place, and progressing through to the repechage, Kinross Wallaroy stroke 
stroked by Fletcher Smith. In third, Kinross Walleroy stroked by Willow Carter. In fourth position, Newington College. In fifth, Pembroke School. And in sixth, Trinity Grammar. The winning time, 6.57.98, and the margin, just 0.93. In the second heat of the schoolboy Cox Quad Skull, we have Cranbrook School in lane two from New South Wales, Gippsland Grammar in lane three, in lane four, Radford College ACT, in lane five, Trinity College WA, in lane six, the Southport School, Queensland, and in lane seven, St. Patrick's College of Victoria. Radford College in the lead at the 1,000 metre mark. The crew of Noah Vosen, Angus Scott, Connor Maloof and Hamish McKee, coxed by Pippa Humphreys, coached by William Hatcher, Max Mayer and Gordon Marks. Cranbrook in second place, Felipe Markel, Edward Hartwright, Jasper Dawson Damer and William Wright, coxed by Tom Gloucester and coached by Adrian Henning. St Patrick's College all the way across the other side in lane seven. They are in third place at halfway, only just. Lockie Belleville, Harrison Grant, Hugh Jackson and Henry Reiner. Harry Lester is their cox and their cro coaches are Craig Murphy and Tom Mash. Trinity College is in fourth. That's uh, Xavier Nicoletto, Liam Gearan, Jack Bletchinden and Rocco Fowler, coxed by Nathan Tobin and coached by Joe Dawson and Dejan Bohus. The Southport School are in fifth and Gibson Grammar are in sixth. Are we missing somebody? Nope, that's right. Six crews. The the Southport School crew is Harrison Howard, Trent Vincent, Matthew Coleman and John Onetto, coxed by Sean Moodimu and coached by Ian Hawley, Amelia Connolly and John Smith. Smythe, sorry, John, and Gippsland Grammar. That crew, gosh, they have a lot of crews. That crew is Jada Frith, Blake Fairweather, Legan Joshi and Samuel Reynolds, coxed by Lachlan McColl. What a lineup of guys. Radford College in the lead at halfway, coming up to the 1500 metre mark. Well, it looks like another great race here, Lizzie. So it was two seconds the gap between Radford College and Cranbrook at the 1000 metre mark. We're going to get the 1500 metre time check. It's a bit strange, isn't it? We're so often at regattas seeing those middle lanes being where the competition is. Mm. This regatta, we're used to six and seven, but today we're getting lanes four and lane two as well being, uh, well, actually, we're just seeing a move here by St. Patrick's College talking about lane seven. There you Ooh. go. Commentator's curse. That's Ooh. the reverse curse. <laughs> St. Patrick's College, they've moved up into second place. So they were sitting further back at the 1K, which means they are lifting here and Radford College, who led Cranbrook by two seconds at the 1K, now it's two seconds to St. Patrick. They're eating into this advantage. So can they pull it back further with 500 metres to travel? Or will that big push damage St. Patrick's College and tire them out? Will Cranbrook be able to come back at them? Southport School sitting some 8.8 .8 seconds behind. A couple of lengths. So here they come. Three crews potentially with a shot here of going through to the semi-final. Three into one, it doesn't go. There's only one spot in the semi-final. And right now as they come into view, St. Patrick's College, who were 2.7 seconds behind at the 1500, may well have taken the lead. But there is a response coming from Radford College, who have led for most of this race, the crew from the ACT. Cranbrook over on the far side. That's some tough conditions over there. They're back in third. You could probably say they are out of it at this point unless they can produce something miraculous. It's a race in two here for the one spot in the semi-final of the schoolboys Cox Quad Skull. And it is between St. Patrick's College and Radford College. Radford College who have led for most of this race. St. Patrick's College are coming at them late. Radford College go through the bright sunshine with their bow in front at the moment. St. Patrick's College, they lifted late, but they are not going to get there. And Radford College hold on to go through to the semi-final. St. Patrick's College, gee, they put up a fight, but it isn't enough in the end. Cranbrook in third. Trinity College are gonna come through in fourth, the local crew. I should say that's the Southport School in fourth. Trinity College in fifth place. And 
rounding out this field in sixth, Gippsland Grammar. So confirming the results of the second heat of the schoolboy Cox Quad Skull, a win for Radford College, who will progress through to the semi-final. The remainder of the crews will go to the repechage, and that will be second place St. Patrick's College, third place Cranbrook, fourth place Southport School, fifth place Trinity College, and sixth place Gippsland Grammar. What a great race, though. Radford College uh, crossed the line in seven minutes, 36.63, and the Margin was 2.29. Big gap, wasn't it? So you, you look at heat one, Northern yeah. Beaches secondary did that in 6.58. Mm. 36 seconds the difference there. Now, um, I'm going to bring the lineup of heat three to you in just a second, but I did just want to make sure everybody knows Cruz, Bannister Downs Milk, who have a truck there near the regatta shop at the end of the boat park closest to the uh, finish tower. They are giving out milk for free. They have three flavors. They are Western Australia's favorite milk. It's in fully biodegradable packaging and it's just wonderful. There's free milk here for our rowers. So given that we've got lots of hungry school kids here and they're gonna be thirsty too at the end of all of this racing, um, please clubs, coaches, athletes, go and collect yourself some milk from that green truck there at the end of the boat, end of the boat park. Uh, right, heat three, we have Emmaus College of Queensland in lane two, Radford College again in lane three, Ballarat Grammar in lane four, Gippsland Grammar in lane five, Pulteney Grammar from South Australia in lane six, and Hunter Valley Grammar School in lane seven. In the Emmaus College crew from Queensland, we have Nicholas Thompson, Gile Ole, Tristan Vesey, and Harry Brandt. Layla Struthers is coxing them, and Kim and Bonnie Byrne are their coaches. This Radford College crew is Hunter Jolly, Jake Sheeman Rogers, Hamish Roberts, and Oliver Fox, coxed by Izzy Farris and coached by William Hatcher, Maximilian Mayer, and Gordon Marks. The Ballarat Grammar crew is Lockie Heath, Charlie Savage, John T. Fall, and Oliver Harris, Shaylia Rogers. Ryan is their cox and they are coached by Paul Commons. The Gippsland Grammar crew in this race is Curtis Wilmot, Evan Lewis, Anthony Smith and Thomas Gillam. Camden Bayer is their cox and their coach is Danny Crofton. Uh, the Pulteney Grammar crew is Fred Modra, Charlie Grivel, Tyson Woodley and Lockie Miller. William Thompson is the cox and the coaches are Carl and Nicole Shunby. And Hunter Valley Grammar School, currently sitting in third position with 500 metres to go, has Luke Purdy and Vaughan Henderson from the uh, very, I think, winning under-19 men's double skull. Max Blatchley and Hayden Williamson. Their cox is Moira Geraghty and their coaches are Odin McIntosh and Rowan Hislop. Sorry, over to you then, uh, Ben, to give us where we're at, the 1,500 metre mark. Well, race in two, isn't it? Radford College were in second at the 1,500, 1.11 behind Ballarat College in first. Hunter Valley Grammar a further 12 seconds back. There's some strong rowers in that boat, but they're a bit off the pace at the moment in regards to heading through to the semi-final at the first time of asked. So here we go. Here Good they lift. come. Good lift, isn't it? Ballarat yeah. Grammar have really put down the legs here. Remembering it was only one second between themselves and Radford College from the ACT heading into the last 500. But Ballarat Grammar, the Victorians, they have opened up this advantage even further, heading into 100 metres to go. And they are in pole position here. They're in the best seat to go through to the semi-finals of the schoolboys' Cox quad skull. They are rowing away with it now. Ballarat Grammar School extending this advantage over Radford College. That is going to give them plenty of confidence going into the semi-finals, the way they finish that. Radford College, they put in the effort. They couldn't overhaul the deficit, and they will finish in second place. Hunter Valley Grammar, they are coming through now. They've also put in... A good finish to come home in third. So they're going to go to the Repper charge. There's going to be an intriguing finish here for fourth and fifth. Emmaus on the far side. Ballarat Grammar in the centre of the course. Gippsland Grammar involved. And it's very, very tight on the finishing line. So Gippsland Grammar 
just edged out by Emmas on the line. Just confirming Ballarat Grammar through there in first, Radford College in second place. And Pulteney Grammar is well back. We're thinking they may have an issue in the boat here as the sun sets here on day four of the Australian Rowing Championships here in Perth. Still got a good few races left, though. In heat three of the schoolboys, Cox Quad Skull, the win went to Ballarat Grammar, and they will progress directly through to the semi-final. Progressing through to the repechage, second placed Radford College, third placed Hunter Valley Grammar School, fourth placed Emmaus College, and fifth placed Gippsland Grammar. And it does look as though the Pulteney Grammar School crew will finish, which means that they'll progress to the repechage as well. So good on them. They've obviously got an issue, but they're carrying on. We have heat four of the schoolboys Coxed Quad Skull coming down the course. Kinross Wallaroy are in lane three. Brisbane Boys College are in lane four. Hale School from WA are in lane five. Trinity Grammar are in lane six. And Trinity College from WA are in lane seven. The Kinross Wallaroy crew is Harry Dimmock, Nicholas Tancred, Oscar Cleary and Oliver Smith, coxed by Philpa Martin and coached by Benjamin Watt. The Brisbane Boys College crew is Frederick Bromel, Joshua Deal, Parker Pohio and Henry Wake, coxed by Fraser Geldard and coached by John Tyne. The Hale School crew is James Stanifer smith Jack Johnson, Cody Boakman and Lachlan Treesize, coach coxed by Shin Ida and coached by Mike Quinn. The Trinity Grammar crew is Hugo Osmond, Nicholas Whiteoak, William Ball and Charlie White, coxed by George Karagiannis and co coached by Jackson Harrison and Lachlan Goller. And the Trinity College crew from WA is Tom Blaney, Liam Giron, Fraser Perkins and Xavier Nicoletto, coxed by Lucas D'Angelo and coached by Kenzie Boo and Liam D. And you're getting a good view here on the live stream of Kinross Wallaroy in lane three on the near side. In the middle of the course, Brisbane boys, Trinity Grammar as well, doing nicely. They're behind by 1.47, the Trinity Grammar crew, on screen at the moment. And that was at the 1,000. And they have turned that into an advantage over Kinross Wallaroy. So they have switched positions. So... It's about a four and a half second turnaround. Trinity Grammar in that middle, or that third, I should say, 500 of the race. So Kinross Wallaroy, can they produce a 2.97 second turnaround in the last 1,500 metres here? The last 500 metres, sorry. 1,500 metres, Kinross Wallaroy behind by 2.97. Brisbane boys are not out of it either. They're in lane four. They were 2.39 further back. So all the racing here looks to be over on the far side, the near side, if you're watching on the live stream, as these three crews come down the course. In view at the moment, Trinity Grammar, they are leading the way. Kinross Wallaroy, they're not going away. Neither are the Brisbane boys crew in lane four. Further back, Hale and also Trinity College. Those two crews out of the running in terms of going straight through to the semi-finals, but they'll still get the opportunity in the rapid charge. Schoolboys Cox Quad, heat number four, final heat here, race 414, and Trinity Grammar leading Kinross Wallaroy with 150 metres to travel. Kinross Wallaroy are lifting it up. They're trying to close the gap. It is a substantial one now. They were in front at the 1,000, Kinross Wallaroy, but Trinity Grammar have come up and over the top. Kinross Wallaroy are trying to lift, but it's not going to be enough in the end. Trinity Grammar just a few strokes away from securing their spot in the final of the schoolboys, the semi-final of the schoolboys Cox Quad, and they are there now. Kinross Wallaroy through to the rapid charge. They'll be in a good lane, better than that one they're currently in in lane three. Brisbane boys finish third, and we are going to see Hale and Trinity College bring up the rest of the field. So Trinity College looks as though they have 
come well across the course. The crew in lane seven. And Hale in lane five. They are going to finish this one in fifth place. So as this final crew comes across the line, we can confirm the heat results and progression. This is heat four of the schoolboys coxed quad skull and our final heat. In first place and progressing through to the semi-final, Trinity Grammar from Victoria. In second place and going to the rapid charge, Kim Ross Walleroy. In third, Brisbane Boys College. In fourth, Hale School. And in fifth, Trinity College. Have I got that the wrong way around? Uh, Trinity, Trinity College and Hale. Oh yeah, Trinity out. College yep. were fourth and Hale were fifth. They progressed through to the rapid charge tomorrow. The winning time was 7.26.85 and the margin was 4.28. Okay, lots of words now. Sorry, everybody, I'm going to make your ears bleed with all the names, but I think it's really important we recognise who is in which crew in the schoolgirls. Coxed eight. We have four heats, is it? Four heats to go. In this first heat, we've got MLCQ, Methodist Ladies College from Victoria in lane two, Pimble Ladies College in lane three, Caulfield Grammar in lane four, Melbourne Girls Grammar in lane five, Furbank Grammar in lane six, and St. Catherine's School from Victoria in lane seven. So plenty of Victorian crews, get excited. MLCQ is Georgie Thomas, Amy Crow, Bella Oliver, Annabelle Rod Rodbart Bean, Holly Wild and Madeline Croker, Dominique Lovett and Meg Dumbrell in the stern and Ella Werner at their cox. In Pimble Ladies College, we've got Alessandra Brasich, Catherine Walker, Holly Craig, Charlotte Hartin, Tilly Morgan, Nia Booth, Megan Wood and Jessica Colbran and their cox is Serena Lung. Caulfield Grammar, we've got Amelia Pinder, Grace Kennedy, Olive Pascoe, Annabelle Barnett, Stephanie Longley, Ella Maskiel, Ava Pigeon, Emily Condren, and their cox is Ivy Jones. Melbourne Girls Grammar is Hannah Glover, Amelie McComb, Isabel uh, Ross, Tara Richardson, Lola Dahan, Lily Wallace, and Matilda Heyman. Sophie Johnson in the stroke seat, and Sophia Wilson Coxing. Furbank Grammar is Annabelle Russell, Maya Page, Orla McCarthy, Frankie Dever, Giselle Buckley, Emma Goff, Sophia Scott, and Angelica Woodruff with Aurelia Fife Coxing. And the St. Catherine School Victoria crew is Freya Cantwell, Zara Peel, Scarlett Shelton, Zoe Hall, Lucy Green, Chloe Nevins, Sienna Darcy, Jemima Wilcox, and their cox, Scarlett Pringle. They're coached by John Saunders and Bridget Carlisle. They won Henley Women's Regatta last year. Brilliant work there, Lizzie, getting through all of those names. This Ooh, is be... it's so exciting. <laughs> so they are in the lead, aren't they? St. Catharines from Victoria. Looks like yeah, Melbourne Girls Grammar in second. Yep, yeah, 1.11, so this is going to be good. First two through to the semi gap. Back Ooh, to third is, two. is right. eight seconds back to oh, MLCQ. Right. So. so St. Catharines and Melbourne Girls Grammar look as though they are in the safe spot. MLCQ going to get a good lane in the repechage. 8.25 seconds further back. So Victorian takeover here in this first heat. Sure is. Speaking of Victoria, nice segue into the AFL if you're wondering what oh. the score is. <laughs> oh, no. I was wondering how I was going to get this in. So Ray just wanted me to mention that the Western Bulldogs, 4-3-27, leading the Brisbane Lions, 2-7-19. And uh, in the Rugby League, the Roosters leading the Eels, 6-2 after half an hour. So there you go. Yeah, the Roosters. There's your football updates brought to you by the Australian Rowing Championships. Head to the Australian Rowing Championships website for all of your rowing information. OK, here we go. The Sydney Cup. We are in heat number one. Schoolgirls 8, St Catherine's School leading Melbourne Girls Grammar by about five seconds. MLCQ 11 seconds back. So we've been getting used to it just being top boat through to the final. Semi-final, I should say, getting ahead of myself. It's the top two now in the um, Schoolgirls Cox 8. So the margin is 11 and a half seconds to MLCQ. That's a really big margin to pull back with only about 300 metres to travel. St. Catherine's School in first place. Melbourne Girls Grammar in second. Those two are in the uh, automatic qualification spots for the semi-final. MLCQ in third place. Then it's pretty tight for fourth, fifth and sixth. 
Pimble ladies in that battle with Furbank Grammar, Caulfield Grammar as well. So here is St. Catherine's School. 150 metres to travel. Cantwell Peel, Shelton Hall, Green, Nevins, Darcy, and Wilcox, Cox by Pringle. The uh, bronze medalists at the schoolgirl head of the river in Victoria. And they're going to back that up with a spot straight through to the semi final in the schoolgirls' Cox 8. And you know what they're doing? They're beating the crew that beat them in the schoolgirl head of the river. They'll be happy with that. Well, and you know what? This crew that is going to come through here in second Melbourne girls' Kramer, maybe, maybe they'll just give them a wink and say it's only a heat. Just, uh, <laughs> settle down a little bit because we've got some finals to come later on in the week to settle this once and for all. So MLCQ in third place. Pimble ladies in fourth. They are trying to hang on here. Furbank Grammar are coming at them. Not quick enough though. Furbank Grammar fifth and sixth place is going to be Caulfield Grammar. Confirming the results of the first heat of the schoolgirls' Cox date, a win for St. Catherine's School, Victoria. Second, Melbourne Girls' Grammar, Victoria. Those two, two crews progressed directly through to the semi-final. Third, MLCQ. Fourth, Pimble Ladies College. Fifth, Furbank Grammar. And sixth, Caulfield Grammar progressed through to the repercharge. Winning time, 733.2. The margin 8.69. Oh, have a look at this start. There's a serious issue here. Just checking, this is the uh, second heat of the schoolgirls, eight St Hilda's from WA went right across there, trying to get themselves back straight there. They're a fair way behind. I'll let you go through the crews. Uh, actually, interestingly, St Catherine's School from New South Wales lost a fin on the way to the start yesterday and raced without a fin. Um, but but um, they hit a log in the water, so I wonder if the same thing has happened to that crew, which is St Hilda's. Um, so the crews in heat two of the schoolgirls' Cox data, Penross, which is the uh, local WA college in lane three, Guildford Grammar in lane four, PLC Perth in lane five, Loretto Turak in lane six and St Hilda's of WA so St Hilda's Anglican School for Girls in lane seven um, in lane three the Penross crew is Reagan Marshall Ella Brown and Mackenzie Evely Lauren Gann Olivia Sanderson Sophie Dreghorn and Courtney Shelby coxed by Sophie oh sorry stroked by Sophie Strickland and coxed by Asha Otley the Guildford Grammar from WA crew is Kelsey Brennan Yannicka Bard Claire Hill Gigi Solomon Emma Pittman Lucy LaCoultra Tilly Lee Herman Ralph and Rosie Webster coxed by Helena Harworth. PLC Perth is Cheyenne, sorry, Cheyenne Norwood, Brynja Wakefield, Charlotte Gijbu, Isabel Harold, Olivia Noblauch, Sophie Hardcastle, Eloise Noblauch, and Chloe Shortinghus, coxed by Annabelle Antonovich. The Loretto Turat crew is Zoe. Kritikides, Stephanie Bear, Charlotte Lloyd, Claire McGurr, Charlotte Grant, Alexander Fairchild, Claudia McNee and Isabel Meller, coxed by Eloise Bull. And the St Hilda's crew that's struggling a little at the beginning, Matilda Finlayson, Lily Hannaford, Clara Collier, Maya Tibbles, Krista Zuvela, Olivia Youngson, Olivia Park, Lucy Ridley and their cox, Adelaide Shadlow-Bath. How's she doing? Has she managed to wrest control of the eight? Well, they've got themselves back within a second of Penross. What a horrible thing to happen on the start, though. She looks like she's handling it really well, that Cox. Well done. Well, this is intriguing because if they had that issue at the start and they are able to make good use of that water, because we know the wind, it has been increasing. I was just checking the app. It's got uh, quite gusty, especially down that end of the course. This St Hilda's crew, look at them. Look at them come through They're the field. They're coming back, aren't they? Oh, this could Very be really nerve-wracking, especially. So a, a clear winner, which is the winner of the schoolgirl head of the river in Victoria, yeah? Loretta Turak's first date. Uh, yeah, so Loretta Turak leading the way. PLC Perth was second at the 500, but I believe they may have been uh, reeled in by Guildford Grammar. We'll get confirmation here. So Loretto Turak, they are comfortably good. out yeah. in first place, looking very good, the Victorians. Now, this is the question I've got. Guildford Grammar, and we're waiting quite a lot for these crews to come through. There's the shot. 
So Guildford Grammar moved up in lane four. They've moved up into second place, but the real question here, St Hilda's, they are coming. So um, PLC Perth it is. PLC Perth in second, so confirming PLC Perth in second, St Hilda's in third. Now we're getting a nine second gap here between PLC Perth in lane five and St Hilda's in third place. Maybe the drone is a little deceiving, but it looked to be closer than that. So that's the gap. It is nine seconds. Yeah, it probably looks that right now. So PLC Perth. Now, we're getting... Lizzie, this could be an interesting one because I think that the Guildford Grammar crew looks to be the crew that is furthest up the course because they're second in from the right, but our timing is giving us PLC Perth in second. I think PLC Perth are back sort of in fourth. Ooh, we're gonna, because you've got Penross, who were first in on that far side, then Guildford Grammar, who looked to be further up, PLC Perth, then Loretto Turek, then St Hilda's. So we might have to get a closer look at those. They come through the 1500, a Zudi check. At least we know this is uh, Loretto Turek because they have that very distinctive blue, I think it's an Empacker, which is very unusual because Pen Empackers are normally yellow. Um, and I think they've had, le had that specially sprayed blue their school colours. Um, oh, there we go. Now we get a view. So that's seven, six, Loretta Turek, five, PLC Perth, Guildford Grammar. No, it is Guildford Grammar in lane four and then Penross in lane three. Yes. So I believe. I know. That would have cost a lot. <laughs> but hey, they want school head of the river, so it must be good. Because it's all about the equipment, right? Not about the athletes. <laughs> you ask my husband. He'll tell you. It's about the boat. <laughs> so just a few boats going each which way, and it is tough in these conditions. So we'll get confirmation now whether this is PLC Perth, Guildford Grammar. We believe it's Guildford Grammar here. But that is the colours of PLC Perth. OK, well, we're going to go with PLC Perth. St Hilda's are in third. They've closed the gap to three seconds. There might have been a lane switch at the start of this race that we we don't know about. So um, we'll try and uh, get to the bottom of this. Guildford Grammar, we're getting 12 seconds further back. So Guildford Grammar, white and navy blue. PLC Perth are green and navy blue. And this is the Penrose crew bringing up the uh, rear of the field. Out in front though, Loretto Turak, they are leading the way in first place, so there's no doubt about that. And then St Hilda's who had that horrible start, can they try and pull back on PLC Perth, who may well have done a little bit of a lane switch with Guildford Grammar earlier on in this event. Heat number two of the schoolgirls, Cox 8. Just a reminder, first two through to the semi-finals. Also a reminder, St Hilda's. Off the start, they were last and they had an issue with the steering of the boat. So they have come from a long way back to challenge here to go through to the semi-final. That would be relieving if they could make it through after all that drama. Loretto Turak. Track. Yes, look at them coming home by such a long way. Congratulations, ladies. Sending a very clear message about what they want to do in this schoolgirl cock state here at the Australian Rowing Championships 2023. And they're absolutely pumped. This would be the comeback of the day from St Hilda's. This will go in the Rowing Australia email. The report of day four of St Hilda's can pull this back after the start they had. They are taking on PLC Perth. There's 100 metres to travel. PLC Perth in front. It's going to take something special from St Hilda's from this point because it's a gap that is still quite substantial at this point of the race. PLC Perth get there. St Hilda's, they will be devastated after what happened earlier because if they didn't have the mishap maybe it would have been them that went through to the semi-final and then Guildford Grammar and Penrose to round out this field in heat two of the schoolgirls Cox to eight confirming the results of the second heat of the schoolgirls Cox to eight a fantastic win for Loretto Turak by 41 seconds second PLC Perth and those two crews will progress through to the semi-final in third St Hilda's in fourth Guildford Grammar and in fifth Penrose they will progress through to the repechage 
Winning time, 7 minutes, 37.92. The margin, 41.69. The third heat of the schoolgirls Cox State is now in progress with Wesley College Victoria in lane three, Friends School from Tasmania in lane four, Geelong Grammar in lane five, St Catherine School Victoria in lane six and St Catherine School New South Wales in lane seven. In the Wesley College crew we have Jasmine Woolhouse, Emily Spurrett, Lauren Keneally, Ella Davey, Madeline Marquet Walker, Caitlin Woods, Aurora Sawinski and Saskia Blackburn coxed by in to go Walker. In lane four, the Friends School crew is Esther Falloon, Bridie Woolley, Audrey Hope, Sophie Neal, Alana Edwards, Sophie Bryant, Lucy Cooper, Jara Wilcox, and their Cox is Gabrielle Hill. The Geelong Grammar, Grammar crew in this race is Matilda Hunt, Kitty Kiswada, Aisha Yates, Eva Griswellitz, Claire Hamilton, Sienna Huon, Quimby Yates and Emily Pincock coxed by Olivia Mann. The St. Catherine School Victoria crew in this race is Catherine Ross, Catherine Souter, Sienna Rigg, Rhea Werner, Georgia Zur, Emily Snell Bliss, Rosie Oxley and Olivia Howitt coxed by Millie McIntosh. And the St. Catherine School New South Wales crew is Madeline Mannins, Bianca Rupnik Williams, Sienna Morgan, Chelsea Baker, Erin Cara, Leela Gaston, Madeline Swain, Jade Bliss and their cox Sophie Castellas. They were the winners of the New South Wales Schoolgirl Head of the River. Well done, Lizzie. It's so exciting. There's two ben, St. Catherine schools. Ben Homer is... Uh, Heading home for the afternoon. Home is heading home. So thank you for your efforts today, Ben, and well rode and into, thank you, into ben, the final. And thanks for all the rugby league information. <laughs> brought to you not by the Australian Rowing Championships, by by an ABC commentator on rugby league. <laughs> <laughs> no, Foxtel. <laughs> St. Catherine School. Hmm, which one? Which one? Uh, New yeah. South Wales is in the lead over Geelong Grammar, and the Friends School is sitting in third place at the halfway mark. So the Wesley College crew coached by David Webster, who coxed Australia, the cox of the uh, wonderful 2011 Lightweight 8 World Championship well, winning crew. Right. He was too, yeah. And uh, friends coached by Max McQueenie and Anthony Edwards. Anthony went to, what, five Olympic Games, I think? Five Olympic Games, yeah. An amazing Max lightweight and a wonderful coach. Max McQueenie, a no member of the Australian Senior A team on occasions, and uh, Geelong Grammar, no coach lifted, unfortunately. St Catherine School from Victoria, Richard Green, the coach, and St Catherine's from New South Wales, the coaches, Jared Watson, Richard Coakley, and Georgia Shearer. And that St Catherine's crew has a very nice margin, similar to the Loretto Turak crew. Maybe not as great, but they have got a very handsome lead. And I reckon they've dropped the rate a little, Lizzie. They're looking pretty comfortable over there, don't you think? They are indeed. Um, I was looking at the other St. Catherine School, and that looks to me as though it is their second eight, which had got the bronze medal at the schoolgirl head of the river. Oh, OK. So five minutes, 30.66, margin of 9.04, which is nothing like the Loretto Turak crew. They had a whopping margin. Friends in third place, a crew coached by Max McQueenie and Anthony Edwards. That's Esther Falloon, Bridie Woolley, Audrey Hope, Sophie Neal, Alana Edwards, Sophie Bryant, Lucy Cooper, Jarrah Wilcox and Gabrielle Hill is the coxswain. As our drone shots come into view, It's down to about 28 strokes to the minute. The leading boat from St Catharines in Station 7. Over Friends from Tasmania in second place. So St Catharines in Station 7, Madeline Mannins, Bianca Rupnik, Williams, Sienna Morgan, Chelsea Baker, Erin Cara, Layla Gaston, Madeline Swain, Jade Bliss, Sophie Castellas is the coxswain. Wesley College crew on the far side, Jasmine Woolhouse, Emily Spirit, Lauren Keneally, Ella Davey, Madeline Marquette, Walker, Caitlin Woods, Aurora Slewinski, Saskia Blackburn, Indigo Walker, Geelong Grammar, Matilda Hunt, Kitty Kisvada, Aisha Yates, I Grillizic, Claire Hamilton, Sienna Hewan, Quimby Yates, Emily Pincott, Olivia Mann, the coxswain, and St Catharines from Victoria, Catherine Ross, Catherine Souter, Sienna Rigg, Rhea Werner, Georgia Caesar, 
Emily Snell Bliss, Rosie Oxley, Olivia uh, Howard, Millie McIntosh, the coxswain. But a big win to St Catherine School from New South Wales in Station 7 in Heat 3 of the Schoolgirl 8 for the Sydney Cup. In second place will be the Friends School from... Ah, uh, no, in fact, Geelong Grammar got up and finished second. It is their lighter colours there. And then Friends will be third. Fourth then will be St Catharines and fifth will be Wesley College. Confirming the results of the third heat of the schoolgirl Cox date, a win for St Catharines School, New South Wales. Second, Geelong Grammar School. Those two crews will progress through to the semi-final. Moving now to the repercharge, the Friends School of Tasmania, who were third, St Catharines School, Victoria, who were fourth, and Wesley College, Victoria, who were fifth. The winning time, 7.23 by... 0.98, and that is by 10 seconds the fastest time that we've had so far in the schoolgirl eights. But we're moving now to the fourth and final heat. No, we're not. Yes, yes we, we are. are. And we have Gen Genazano in lane three, Melbourne Girls Grammar in lane four, MLC Perth in lane five, Seymour College South Australia in lane six, and MLC Q in lane seven. And the, they're at the halfway mark, Lizzie. Are they? There we go. So in yeah. the lead is Seymour College. They're in lane six, and that's the crew of Zali Grundhoff, Georgia Walters, Anya Felderhoff, Caroline McNally, Grace Barrera, Victoria Bins, Abby Arnold, and Daisy Holland, coxed by Sasha Walker. Victoria Bins has done some laps. She's, she has. So. Um, Jenna Zano in second place, his school from Melbourne. And in third place, Melbourne Girls Grammar. Then follows MLC, MLCQ. So second, third and fourth, all uh, Melbourne-based crews. And in fifth place is MLC Perth. So that Genazano crew, it's in lane three. It's sitting in second position right now. And it's the crew of Zoe Caldwell, Mackenzie Crawford, Anna Stone, Matilda Fulton, Samantha Bianco, Isabella Morrison, Sienna McLeish, and Alice Egan. Their cox is Lexi Tricarico, and their coaches are Tom Fisher and Peter Campbell. The Melbourne Girls Grammar Crew, this is Sophie Davies, Emily Twitt, Emma Mc... Enna Kafferke, Jessica McLennan, Emily Walters, Lulu Burney, Felicity Batten and Cara Duffy. Their cox is Audrey Surache. The MLC Q crew is in lane seven is currently sitting in fourth position, but only by 1.22 seconds. So big cheer for M Methodist Ladies College Victoria. It's the crew of Sophie Lynn, Sarah Palavestra, Sophia Capuleus, Zara Kraus, Anna Jackson, Laura Torbman, Claire Wong, and Emily Davies, coxed by Care, Care, sorry, Kate Roscombe. I need to put my teeth in. Coached by Benedict O'Leary and Phoebe George Arcus. And Our leading vote is Seymour College, and they're on 34 strokes Ooh. to the minute. So they're still leading, and they're leading by 12 seconds over Genazano now. And um, our final crew is MLC Perth, which is Hallie Alexander, Charlotte Spencer, Kendra McLennan, Millie Lamb, Sophie Hart, Imogen Hubbard, Alexia Leek, and Drina Buckin. Uh, Sophie Vo is there, Coxton. They are coached by Kane Bristow and Marshall Varley. So uh, Melbourne Girls Grammar has been passed for that third place. Now MLC Q have gone up into third place. But it looks uh, near certain that uh, the crews of Seymour College and Genazano will, do, will go directly to the semi-finals. However, I think it's much closer than that. Uh, no doubt about the lead for Seymour College. But Genazano on the far side and MLC Q on this side... That it's not insurmountable, I wouldn't think. It isn't. Um, you can see there's a little bit of a gust of wind, though. So from what we've heard from uh, quite a few athletes, is sometimes that catches you unaware. So you really need to be on your A game as you progress your way up the course, so that you catch those gusts and don't get blown away by them. Yeah, but it uh, certainly looks like it is the crew from Genazano that will go through into second place, yeah. and uh, the crew from MLCQ in Station Seven will finish in third place. Then fourth will be Melbourne Girls Grammar and fifth will be MLC Perth as the uh, K 
cameras at the finish line show the winners, Seymour College, with about three strokes left to go. They'll cross on this stroke. Seymour College will be first. Genazano on the far side of the course, near the car park, will finish in second place. And then that Melbourne Girls Grammar School, they've been pushing the whole way. 16.57, so a handsome margin. Yeah, it's going to be MLCQ that will place third. Melbourne Girls Grammar will just have to settle for fourth this time round and go through the repechage, and they'll be joined by MLC Perth. A lot of Methodist ladies' colleges around, aren't there? There is. And um, schoolboy Cox State's are already underway, Lizzie. So, so results of heat four of the schoolgirl Cox State is a win for Seymour College and second Genazano. Those two crews will progress directly through to the semi final. Progressing to the repechage, MLCQ third, Melbourne Girls Grammar fourth, MLC P Perth fifth. The winning time for Seymour College, 7 minutes 30.92, the margin 16.57. And in uh, heat yeah. one of the schoolboy Cox eight, lane one is Shaw, lane two St Kevin's, lane three the Southport School, lane four Trinity College, lane five Brisbane Boys College, lane six Scotch College and lane seven Melbourne Grammar School with Brisbane Boys College leading through the 1000 metre mark in three minutes 11.2. Uh, 0.35 and they're 2.53 seconds. That's about a length in a schoolboy eight, Lizzie. So uh, that, is this the same crew that won the uh, first eight? Uh, why don't I have a look? Yes, it is. Here we go. Mitchell Owen in the uh, five seat is the uh, captain of boats at uh, Brisbane Boys College. So Xavier Rubens. David Granson, Liam Crook, Joseph Tyne, Mitchell Owen, and Daniel and Matthew Cashman, the twins, Thomas Stevens in the stroke seat, Eden, uh, Bo Palmer, the coxswain, and John Pettigrew, the coach. And they've opened up to 3.91 now over Scotch College in second place from Victoria. And look at that shot. Wow. What a different perspective drone footage brings to our wonderful sport. It's a fantastic shot, isn't it? So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you're at the course, there's a big screen by the finish tower where you can see the drone footage that's being taken at the moment. Looks amazing, doesn't it? And we can see our crews coming now towards the finish with Brisbane Boys College in the lead. Scotch College sitting in second place, just beside them in lane six. They're in lane five. Then on the other side of them, um, you can see Trinity College. It's the Southport School that's it's coming up, I would suggest. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, Trinity College is in lane four, but uh, the Southport School in lane three. And it was a very oh, sorry, close yes, contest sorry. at the head of the river in Brisbane. Not that I was there. Uh, very close between BBC and the Southport School. But Scotch College has got between the two of them on this occasion. But it's an all-the-way win to Brisbane Boys College, continuing their undefeated season. And uh, they'll go through directly to the semi-final from this heat of the Australian Schoolboy H Championships. BBC will be first. Scotch College will be second. The Southport School will be third. Fourth in across to the far side of the course, that St Kevin's will be fourth. Fifth on this side will be Melbourne Grammar. And then sixth, the fast finishing Trinity College crew and seventh will be Shaw over on the far side of the course. 6.28.33, 6.28.33. It's a six minute crew, so um, they break six minutes. So that we're looking at a 30 second wind that's over today for schoolboy eights. Heat two underway? Yeah, so we certainly can confirm from that first heat this of the schoolboy eight that it will be Brisbane Boys College and Scotch College Victoria who will progress through to the semi-final and the remainder of the crews will go through to the repechage. Winning time, 6.28.33. The second heat of the schoolboys Cox State is in progress with St Ignatius College New South Wales in lane one. Hale School of WA in lane two, the Friends School of Tasmania in lane three, the Hutchins School of Tasmania in lane four, Prince Alfred College of South Australia in lane five, Xavier College of Victoria in lane six, and Newington College of New South Wales in lane seven. Now, Lizzie, did you notice the name of the coach of the Prince Alfred College group? 
I did. He's been, his name has cropped up time and time again, so I don't know what he's doing there. I thought he lived in Drumoyne <laughs> next to I've me. I've seen him here, and he's helping out <laughs> he's his old school. There, there you go. He's the great see. Brian Richardson, who's coaching I... Prince Alfred College as a, an old boy of the school. There we go. He's over there helping out, he told me. So but for those who don't know him, Brian Richardson, uh, a former coach of our Australian men's eight and a well-renowned international coach in more than just Australia. Um, I'm Olympian. interested in the coach of the crew in lane one, the St. Ignatius College crew, because Matthew Curtin is the coach of the uh, Riverview College, as we call them, that won the head of the river uh, in New South Wales this last weekend. And this crew in lane one is um, leading at the 500 metre mark. It's the crew of Jack Mackin, Edward Kelly, Ambrose Hennessy, Jack Power, Flynn English, Luca Melozzi, James O'Meara and Matt Collins, coxed by Henry Burton. Is it Matthew Newington in second place? Himself. Oh, really? They did indeed, yes. That 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 uh, school did win five from six. Uh, Newington College, also a New South Wales crew, and right over the other side of the uh, of the race course, Oscar Sutherland, Noah Tainch, Tom Chanter, Christian Biasotto, Angus Mitchell, Morgan Jones, Jamie DeBotton, William Fuller, and their Cox Elvis Johnson, and they are coached by Blair Jenkins, sitting in second place but seven seconds behind. Just four seconds then back to the Hutchins School. Sam Meikle, Campbell Mounter, Jacob Feidler, Oliver Hart, Charles Lee Song, Rowan Sanderson, Falcon Palmer and Archie Stewart Cox by Angus Watling and coached by Andrew Palmer. They've had a busy regatta. <laughs> and friends are up there in Jordan coaching the friends uh, crew from um, Hobart as well. Ian, former lightweight rower, uh, very prominent lightweight rower in Australia and coaching at Friends, so uh, a good, good race. If we took this leading boat out, it'd be a good race, but wow, <laughs> they've got a margin, haven't they? They certainly have, and that uh, Newington College crew look pretty handy too, don't they? So, the so Ma Matthew Curtin, is he new to coaching? He's still a young man. No, not new at all. He was head coach of uh, Loretto Normanhurst for a while and did a really good job there too. And then While he was rowing himself? Or? Um, towards the back end of his rowing, yes. Yeah. Yeah, but a great lightweight rower. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Well, so. Chris McCarthy would have rowed with him. <laughs> really? There you go. Part of our, um, yeah, part of our wonderful group of lightweights around the country, really, and just such a shame that lightweight rowing is being closed down in the Olympics, but it isn't being closed down at the World Championships, and it certainly isn't here nationally, so we must keep the flag flying. At St Ignatius leading Newington, Hutchins, Xavier College are in fourth place, Prince Alfred College are in fifth. As we go to the 1500 metre mark, and we're going to have to wait a little while, uh, St Ignatius have gone through in four minutes 51.37. They're 7.92 in front of the Newington crew in second place. The first crew I saw at the regatta, actually, Newington, out rowing um, yesterday morning. Xavier College in third, Hutchins in fourth, Prince Alfred College in fifth. Very little to choose between Hutchins and Xavier College. Our friends are in sixth place. And then in seventh will be the Hale School here from Western Australia. St Ignatius 7.92, a further 5.92 back to the uh, Xavier College crew. So the two crews on the extremities of the course, both from Sydney, will go straight through to the semi-final and avoid the repper charge. St Ignatius over on the car park side of the course, let's call it, with a handsome lead over Newington on the spectator side of the course. Then the race for third between Xavier College and the Hutchins School, Xavier College of Melbourne and the Hutchins School of Hobart, Xavier in the red and black colours. They're coached by Sean Lake. Just, I love that drone footage, just seeing the puddles of that St Ignatius College crew. Must be great to row in a crew like that. And the, uh, the head of the program at uh, St Ignatius, Grandstand Dan Noonan. He's here. He's here. I've seen him. That's good. So, big win to St Ignatius. They've won convincingly. <laughs> Newington are in second place. And they've also won from the lane that is definitely not favoured. So yes. that's a big... Xavier College a third. Hutchins fourth. Prince Alfred College fifth. Friends sixth. And Hale at the rear in sixth. 
27.13. Unchallenged, a second faster than Brisbane Boys College. Ooh, it's gonna be great un in the final. Unchallenged though, I would suggest. So, St. Ignatius, one would think they can say go faster. who the Barrington Cup will go to. Well, we have a third heat, and in the third heat, we have Wesley College Victoria in lane two, St. Peter's College South Australia in lane three, Caulfield Grammar in Victor uh, Victoria in lane four, Geelong Grammar from Victoria in lane five, Guildford Grammar WA in lane six, and Scotch College Perth in lane seven. Uh, and I'm so sorry, I didn't confirm, but in the second heat, it was St. Ignatius College, New South Wales, and Newington College, New South Wales, that progressed directly through to the semi-final. And going through to the repechage were Hutchins in third, Xavier College in fourth, Prince Alfred College in fifth, Friends in sixth, and Hale School in seventh. So, um, Geelong Grammar leading. Yep, Geelong Grammar leading, and that is the crew of Luca Clark, James Pinkett, D Dipton Fitzgerald, Lloyd Vidotto, Harry Willis, Thomas Pirani, Archibald Allen, and Samuel Stringer coxed by Ted Coakley. Sitting in second, St. Peter's College, South Australia, Albert Howard, Xavier Van Oygen, Eddie Hetherington, William Barone, Ryan Fowler, Tom Edwards, Hamish Scott Young, Hugh Hazel, and their cox, Thomas Whiteman. And coached by James McRae. Coached by James McRae, and again, so good to see our international rowers coming and putting back in. The Wesley College crew, coached by Tom Manifi, who uh, was originally from Sydney. That's Hunter Isaacs, John T. Wellberry, James Hyde, and Xander Skyring, with Nicholas Bryant, Lachlan Idol, Charlie Johnston, and Amos Kirk, and coxed by, coxed by um, last year's junior men's eight cox, Josh Furferkrantz. Caulfield Grammar are in fourth, Scotch College Perth in fifth, and the Guildford Grammar crew are in sixth place. This is the last race of the day, Lizzie. Woohoo! For the Barrington Cup. These are the heats of the Schoolboys Cox 8 Championship of Australia, which carries the trophy of the Barrington Cup. And to make sure we are as excited with the uh, final race of these schoolboys cock states as we were with the first, it's very close, uh, much closer than the previous races. And St Peter's won this a couple of years ago with James McRae coaching them, I believe. Pretty sure that, yes, I think at Lake Barrington. Yep. So they're certainly looking as though they're going to progress through to the semi-final without too much trouble, although it's close. So when I say trouble, I don't mean that they're going to take their foot off the gas at all. Well, they Geelong can't because Wesley the... College are right there with them, they aren't are, they? They are, aren't they? The absolutely spectacular footage coming from Lachlan, the uh, drone driver. And it's nowhere near as dark on the screen as it is out the window. That's very true. So we're trying to beat the sunset here. Oh, look at this. It's really on. So Geelong Grammar, as they come through the last 500 metre mark, are in the lead by just under a length over St. Peter's College, who in turn have half a length over the fast finishing Wesley College. Caulfield Grammar are back some six and a half seconds then, sitting in fourth position. Oh, no doubt about our winner, but se second is still up for grabs. And that uh, fight between Wesley College and St Peter's over on the car park side of the course. Look at the number of bicycles. <laughs> yeah. Not surprisingly, I hope a few of them have got lights on. And it's hotting up because the first two only are going to go through. Ooh, St Peter's no. College and Wesley College stroke for stroke. The two of them working with each other and they're trying to peg back the Geelong Grammar crew. I think Geelong have got too big a lead. But St Peter's College from South Australia and Wesley College from Victoria. The St Peter's crew have answered the challenge, I reckon. They're holding off the Wesley College crew. And uh, St Peter's are coming at the lead is Geelong Grammar. But there's not enough water left, I don't think, because they're, they're sprinting now, St Peter's. Geelong Grammar hanging on to the lead tenaciously. Look at the finish from St Peter's. They've left Wesley College in their wake. Wesley will finish in third place. Geelong Grammar and St Peter's. St Peter's and Geelong. Geelong Grammar will get across first. <laughs> Just narrowly in front of St Peter's College. Wesley College will be third. Bracking race between those three, but unfortunately for Wesley College, they're going to have to go through the ripper charges. Fourth then will be Caulfield Grammar.
Fifth will be Scotch College from Perth. And sixth will be Guildford Grammar from Western Australia. Thank you to those young men. What a fantastic last race of the day here at the Australian Rowing Championships. Heat three of the schoolboy Cox State. It was a win for Geelong Grammar and second St. Peter's College. Those two progressed directly through to the semi-final. Going through the repechage now will be Wesley College, who just missed out. Caulfield Grammar in fourth, Scotch College Perth in fifth, and, Cor and Guildford Grammar in sixth. The winning time was 6.28.45. So that compared with 6.27 in the previous heat, 6.28 in the first heat, and the margin was just 0 0.73. What a fantastic finish to today's racing. So as you said, Lizzie, what a fantastic day of racing we've had what, 420 races, and the last three today have uh, not disappointed, but a great day. First day of finals from under-17s through to senior race. What was the highlight of your day? Oh, I really can't say, because there were just so many amazing races today, and across all spectrums of racing as well. So I've loved seeing um, our para-athletes race, of course, our open athletes race. That's just been so wonderful to see them all, um, and not necessarily the results that were expected, because it's not a time, it's not a national team trial, it's an open regatta. And then we've moved from age categories to school racing, and that's a, you know, often, uh, an athlete will put on a different vest, they'll race for a club in the age races and they'll race for their school here, and that gives you a completely different environment. And thank you to the crowds, because all the mums and dads who have come along, um, all of the friends and supporters getting out there cheering, it's just lit, it's just every single, it feels like every hour is getting more and more exciting. But the racing was fantastic. Two things that stand out in my mind. Tara Rigney winning the single, on her birthday. On her birthday, Amanda Bateman and um, Harriet Hudson putting yes. them on her shoulders and singing happy birthday and the crowd getting involved. And it was wonderful to see Sarah Tate's dad, Simon Outhwaite, here today for the first time to pre present the Sarah Tate Memorial Trophy. Sarah was such a proud Western Australian. She was. Such a proud Swans girl and the trophy is in the shape of a swan and to see her dad Simon here presenting it today really is very moving for an old team manager who were on teams with Sarah for eight years so uh, yes they were the highlights of my day we look forward to tomorrow so ladies and gentlemen I think we've ticked over about a hundred thousand views on the uh, very close to a hundred thousand views on the live streaming so get on board tomorrow and see if we can get up to 120 or 130 before the day's out Thank well, you for uh, for watching. It's going to be exciting. All yeah. over the country and all over the world. And good night from beautiful Champion Lakes in Western Australia.